it is very real. <laughs> it is coming very quickly. Um, right now, about the attrition rate with the major airlines, they're needing about 20,000 pilots in the next five years. The regionals total are about 18,000. So the numbers don't quite add up and there's not a lot of people to pick from anymore to hire onto the regional side. So the pool is getting very shallow. Um, it is very real, it is happening very, very quick. Much quicker, I think, than a lot of people have anticipated. So it's kind of becoming now a mad rush to get as many pilots as possible that are qualified um, in good standing. So it's, it's getting tough out there, it really is. The field's wide open. You know, we're willing to accept so many different applications and different people coming in. Where, when you know, when I was hired five years ago, there was a very strict resume that you had to meet and there had to be certain things on there. And now, um, it's very open. It's you know, willing to work with people, and that's been a huge change. I would say it's just the qualification of candidates coming in. I've been flying commercially for five years. I would say Israel. Been on the industry for four years. Uh, this is my second regional and uh, just by seeing all the advertisement coming from different company with bonuses left and right that tells me that uh, something is not attracting uh, pilots to come in and uh, within my uh, own company I mean the way I sit it just looking at the schedule and uh, when you see the numbers of reserve like uh, constantly be kind of red, meaning that if someone call out for the job or get sick, it's no replacement. So that, that, that really tells me that uh, it's a shortage somewhere. Well, my opinion, the pilot shortage, I definitely think is real. I see it every day. You know, as many of the other regional airlines, we are struggling in, in to get the, find the qualified pilots that will, that will fly for us. So it's def there's definitely a shortage. I have talked to, to many, many pilots that are on the majors and, and the legacy carriers are they, and they see the, the shortage and they have the same difficulty that we, the small regionals, have of finding pilots that could fly for us. Yeah. For what we have, I, some of the uh, comments that I heard from, from a captain, a, a legacy carrier, is that every 18 hours one of their pilots retire and they don't have enough I mean, just because they reach 65 years. Yeah. And, and they don't have enough pilots coming through the rain. And, and I saw, and I seen cases of pilots and major carriers living in the middle of training because a legacy called them. And I think the primary sh uh, cause of the shortage is a combination of two things. We have the baby boomer generation uh, reaching 65 years of age, which is mandatory retirement age. And, and also we have the new rule with the 1500 hours uh, that you need, a pilot needs to have 1500 hours before they could fly for an airline, for a part 121 airline. So, and in addition to that, flight training is costly. So you don't see that many people going into flight training because they, they know after getting their licenses, uh, they still have to build the hours to, to up to 1500 and they, they don't, don't find those jobs. A potential remedy to alleviate the shortage, I think that's the magic question, the million dollar question that everybody will, will like to know. The only thing that I could think that could alleviate a little bit It'll be probably a reduction on the on the minimum time total time required to go into into the majors and into the airlines. That that probably will be fixed for now. But I think it's gonna be a combination of many different things in order to, to alleviate the shortage. The worst case scenario, if the shortage continues, it'll probably you will see um, airlines um, definitely not firing pilots because they need them. But it could be a reduction in frequency, reduction in, in, in service. In some airlines, it could be the end of the airlines because they, if they don't have, if they reduce their frequency, they're not making enough money to stay afloat. So that, I think that's one of the, of the worst case scenario that we'll see for, because of the shortage. I do feel that the pilot shortage is real. Um, I think you've seen signs of it from, uh, you know, the changing demographics as far as uh, requirements to even get a job. Um, there's, they've been steadily uh, uh, looking for more people, aggressively approaching people uh, for the opportunities to get a job with particular regional airlines. Um, and the major carriers are seeing a lot of uh, transition as far as folks coming through and a lot of hiring. My company has been impacted by the pilot shortage. Uh, just from the fact that uh, we're implementing um, more creative ways to attract pilots to our company. Um, of course, we've seen a lot of applicants come through, 
Um, and so I, th I think we're starting to really get into the throes of um, seeing a lot of our older pilots retire and transitioning in new pilots um, on a monthly basis. Yes, I mean, I think we'll get to a point where there just aren't enough qualified pilots to fly uh, flights um, that we have scheduled or even propose. Companies that want to expand can't expand because there just aren't enough pilots available. Um, we don't want to leave this into a situation where it's only for a privileged few. And so we have to um, really encourage find a way to uh, make it financially feasible for those that are hungry and desirable to uh, realize their dreams. Each and every pilot needs to understand that one day you're going to retire and <laughs> you need somebody that's going to follow in your footsteps, if you will, uh, and replace you in that seat. So we've got to do, we've all got to do our part in encouraging the next generation and considering jobs in uh, aviation and aerospace. Overseas right now, um, they are also lacking pilots because everyone is buying a ton of aircraft, and um, you you can work overseas. You know, I want that's why I came back and want all our classmates to know that right now they're looking for expat pilots too. Um, my company last year started a class every month, which is just insane for a major. They usually do like a couple a year. So it's a good time. It's a good time to be a pilot. My opinion on the pilot shortage is, is definitely, it, it's real. Um, we feel it at my level, at the regional level, probably a lot more than the majors feel it. But when, you, when companies are offering huge bonuses, changing the contracts, giving in to certain concessions for the pilots, it's, it's supply and demand. It's, it's definitely real. And you can see it, especially at the career fairs like the one we had today. I have not been impacted personally by the pilot shortage. Uh, actually, I'm going to alter that statement. Yes, I have been impacted personally for the, for the good. As a, as a pilot being able, when I started to apply to regionals and you apply and within the first four hours you get calls from six different companies, you know it's, that it has impact, the pilot shortage has impacted you. Um, as far as the, my employer being impacted, uh, by the, um, by the pilot shortage, yes, they have been impacted. They have, they've recently voted in about a year and a half ago a new contract just to attract new pilots. Uh, this past month, from what I understand, we had 75 pilots leave to move on um, in the industry, and we're only bringing in so many pilots each month. So they have felt it on, an, on a negative scale. I see the pilot shortage as a global issue. Um, I see that as a global issue because I feel it in the United States directly um, through, the, through the regional. Now, the reason why I say globally is because we're being recruited by international companies. Air China is offering huge contracts if you have certain type ratings to come over there for five years. Um, the last article that I read was one pilot got offered that had, a, that had a certain type rating that they were looking for, $310,000 a year for five years. And a lot of that, some, some of that is tax exempt, so he's going to, for the next five years, he's going to get a total of about $1.5 million for going over and flying a 15 day on, 15 day off schedule. I firmly believe that the pilot shortage is real. When I went to apply to the regionals, I uh, put in the application for the airline that was my number one choice. And that afternoon I got a phone call from a recruiter and I was offered a class date for two weeks from that date. And to not have any sort of interview, no screening or anything, just to have my name be put on a list, showed that the company was extremely desperate for pilots. Well, right now it's very specific to the regional airlines and it's very specific to anyone else who needs those low time pilots. So a lot of places, even Embry-Riddle here is the flight department, um, you know, they're struggling to keep instructors um, and regional airlines are struggling to keep pilots and recruit pilots. So right now it's specific to those sort of stepping stone jobs that you would normally build time with, but I'm sure that in the future it will hit the major airlines as well. You're going to see a 
reduction of flight service to a lot of these smaller towns that really rely on the regional carriers to you know, transport people in and out. Major airlines are flying and contracting the 76-seat aircraft instead of 50-seat aircraft more and more because to fly 150 passengers on 76-seat aircraft, now you only need four pilots. To do that on 50-seat aircraft, you need six pilots. And so they're really starting to invest in bigger aircraft where you can move the same number of people um, just with less pilots required to do that um, and I think eventually not in the immediate future but later on down the road you're going to start to see um, you know more innovative technologies and perhaps even single pilot cockpits just because there won't be enough pilots to fly.